Finding a good note-taking system is hard, so let's look at moving from one system to another. This is Notion to Obsidian. Stick around to the end for some free resources and some FAQs. A quick backstory, I've been using Notion since 2020, found it more time wasting than time saving. Enter Obsidian. It's just a simple client that reads markdown files. All your files stay offline and you can use open source tools to sync between your devices. So log into your Notion account, go to settings and members, the menu, click on settings and scroll down to export all workspace content. Now set your export format to HTML. If you want to bring over all your files, videos or anything else that you have stored, you want everything selected here. Just bear in mind that this didn't work for me. It continued to fail. But what worked for me was no files or images. Then create folders for subpages export. Depending on the size of your database, it might take a little while. It took like half an hour before the notification showed up for me. Go to your menu and go to inbox and you'll see a your workspace export is ready and you can select download. Great. So once your notes are out of Notion, this is what you're going to get. A zip file. So the next step is to get Obsidian on our machine. So let's look up Obsidian go to obsidian.md and then you can download for your OS. Go through the installation setup, pretty straightforward, follow the prompts. Now we wanna set up our vault. Vaults are just essentially the book of all of your notes. It's totally up to you how you wanna organize your notes. All we need to do is select create, give it a name, and then just select where you want this to be. So the way I kind of think about it is in my documents, that's where everything goes. I've just created a vaults folder and it's gonna store all my vaults in there. So all we need to do is just select where you want it to go. And there you can see here, your new vault will be placed in root vaults folder and then the vault name. Awesome, so this is what a brand new vault looks like. I'm just gonna go ahead and close the graph view. It will just create a welcome markdown file. And if you're ever curious, just go to the folder on your file explorer and you can see everything that it's made. There's the welcome.md. MD being markdown, text files, but just with a little bit of formatting. Now to import all our notes, we can just go to the settings and we're going to community plugins, turn on community plugins. But before we do that, you do need to understand the risks involved. Community plugins are developed by anyone and we do want to trust who's making the plugins. The team who makes Obsidian, they do review the code. However, since the team is small, they can't audit every single update for every single plugin. So they do rely on the community. You can look at the code because it must be open source. We can go ahead and turn on community plugins and we can go ahead and browse. We want to search up the word import and look for importer. And it's actually by the Obsidian team. I trust the Obsidian team. And this is how we're going to get our notes in. So we just want to install that. Then we can click enable and then we can see here our importer is there. So we close out of that and we go control P. That brings up our command palette and we just type in importer and we can open it that way. We just need to select the file format and this is going to be notion.zip and let's go ahead and select it. Just before we do, we just need to extract that first zip folder that we had, a zip folder already inside that, and that's at the level that we need. Let's go back to Obsidian, go choose file, and you just want to navigate to that folder that we just extracted. It's going to set an import folder. So this one's just gonna be called Notion. Save parent pages in subfolders. And now we can just select import. Now this process, again, like exporting out of Notion, it's just gonna take some time. So just kind of leave it and give it a little while for it to do its thing. After some time, your notes will eventually import. What I like to do is just right click it and go show in System Explorer. And you can just go ahead and make a copy of it. Just if you're gonna start making any changes, you've always got those original files there backed up. There are a lot of funky things to still fix up, like file names, I want the unique IDs removed, and I kind of just want the main notes extracted. I use a lot of templates in these that are still there. So that's kind of the next step is to extract all the information that we want. I'm not going back on my notes, so I'm kind of just gonna leave them as is because I'm a little bit lazy. But let me know if you have any tools that might be able to like pass through this data in an automated way. So now we have our notes imported. A good idea is to have your notes be able to sync between your devices. So if you don't want to fiddle around with settings, you can go ahead and pay Obsidian for that feature to sync notes. But there is another way. It's a harder way, but there is another way. So if we look up a tool called Sync, 
thing. This gives us continuous file synchronization between two or more computers in real time. Totally open source tool, free to use, and it's something that we can set up with Obsidian. So you can go ahead and download it directly from their website. Otherwise we can use like a packet manager. So if you're on Linux, APT or another distro, like you can do that. One easy way on Windows is we can just go ahead and search Winget. So the official version of SyncThing is fine. There is a fork called Sync Tracer, which just gives a little bit of an easier user interface. Uh, so you can use either by just going Winget install and then typing out the name Sync Tracer in this case. Uh, I've already got it, but go ahead and let that run. And what it does is in the taskbar, it just adds the nice little sync thing icon. So to set this up on your multiple devices, you do need the client running on each device. So I've got it now on my desktop. If you wanna sync with a phone, you will need to go to the Play Store or the App Store and download Sync Tracer. And then what you'll need to do is go add remote device and you add your devices by typing out the ID using a QR code and just allowing it that way. Once your remote devices are there, then you go ahead and add folder. So this is the folder that we wanna sync between our devices. So for this example, we're just gonna say Notion import and we just wanna to go to the vault where we've put our files. Then we can go over to the sharing tab and select what device we wanna to share to. In this case, it's my phone. To get that nice syncing experience, there's one more advanced setting that we're going to need to set. So if we go to actions and advanced and we select folders, we can go ahead and select the folder that we've imported, roll down to max conflict. So this is the number of conflict copies to keep around for any given file. So the default is negative one, means an unlimited number. Setting this to zero disables conflict copies. So what we wanna do is just set this to zero, like it said. So we're not gonna have heaps of sync files and it'll just be whatever the latest version of your file is, that'll be synced between devices. But a popular system is to back up our notes. So this is something you can do locally. You could use sync thing going to another device but another option is GitHub. So you will need to go and set up a GitHub account, totally free. And then to get your notes syncing between Obsidian and a remote repository via GitHub, you go and click the settings icon, go to community plugins, browse again, and we're just gonna look up Git. So it's gonna be the first result there, probably. Updated semi-regularly, so that's a nice sign. And given the popularity of this plugin, I'm going to trust the developer. So we can go ahead and install that. Great, once that is installed, then we can actually enable it and we can select option. Now in order for this to work, you are going to need Git installed, which is its own program. Uh, so again, we can just look up Git, free and open source version control software. So you go ahead and download it from here. Or again, if you just wanna use a packet manager, you can go ahead and use that. It looks like we've got git.git .git as the ID. So we can go ahead, run win get install git.git. .git. I've already got it. So you can go over to github.com slash new for a new repo or repository, the folder, the remote place. So you can go ahead and give it a name, description if you want, public or private. So if there's gonna be private notes, make sure that you are selecting private and a git ignore file. If you don't want anything from your local notes to go over to GitHub, then you can go ahead and create your repo. And then lastly, you just need to configure git running via Obsidian with GitHub and your remote repo. It's kind of just followed through the settings. And lastly, just something to keep in mind, the standard for GitHub security, if you use personal access tokens and fine grain tokens. So if you go over to your settings in GitHub, scroll all the way down to developer settings, go over to personal access tokens, and there you can see find grain token. So there you wanna generate a new token. So you wanna give it access to the one repo and nothing else. So in the case that any issues or any compromises or wanted to get to any information on your GitHub account, it is gonna be authorized via this token, which can only see so much. Plus you have to set expiry dates. It's a little bit inconvenient, but I'm more than happy to do that. Great, so let's go over some frequently asked questions. Can you import Notion into Obsidian? Well, I hope through this video, you've seen that yes, it is possible. It's not perfect. There is still some manual adjusting of notes that get imported, but otherwise it does work. You can get your notes out of Notion. Next, how do you replace Notion with Obsidian? Getting your notes out is a good start. 
I've actually found starting a clean vault is working for me. It's kind of given me the opportunity to look at how I was doing things with Notion and kind of simplify and do it a better way. Next up, is Obsidian better than Notion? To me, obviously, yes, because I'm making this video. They kind of do different things anyway. That's kind of what I realized. I was trying to make Notion more like Obsidian without realizing it. Like I wanted offline notes. I didn't want my stuff synced to a remote system that I don't have control over. So for me, Obsidian is better than Notion. All right, what can Obsidian do that Notion can't? So that, that's a pretty good one. I, again, the, the whole team collaboration stuff, it's probably not the best at, but maybe with the sync feature, stuff that I haven't actually used, maybe Obsidian makes more sense. I guess, uh, I'm still kind of new to it, but I guess maybe Notion has like more database features um, that maybe Obsidian might not have. I don't know, there's so many community plugins, I kind of see as like, if Obsidian can't do anything out of the box, like you can probably find a community plugin that might be able to do it. I, I just don't think shoehorning Obsidian into just doing everything is like what the mistake I made with Notion is like, oh, I'm just gonna use Notion for everything. Yeah, it's just kind of like pick a tool to do its job. Is Obsidian really worth it? I think if you're on the fence from going from a tool that you've invested a lot of time in or a platform like Notion, it can feel like quite daunting. I personally think it is really worth doing it. If your circumstances align with what I've been saying, I have not looked back since I've started using Obsidian. It just makes the most sense for note taking. And I'm just trying to build this whole system with it. And just by keeping it simple, it, it just, it's just working. I, I I do think it's worth it, but it does come down to your circumstances, needs, wants, desires, etc. Lastly, who is Obsidian best for? I, I think like it is good for the note taker. If you like taking notes daily, fantastic. If you like a nice writing experience that's easy to organize your notes, fantastic. If you're, if you're a big studier, you do a lot of courses, again, want a way to organize everything, fantastic. If you're not a big collaborator, I think it's best for personal use, personal, smaller use. So a link is in the description for my notes as I'm going through challenges and walkthroughs, I'm gonna be updating them down below and check out my cybersecurity for beginners video.